Alright people, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. That way you'll know when I upload the next video and you'll be supporting my channel. Follow me on Twitter. Every time I upload a new video, I'll be tweeting. Ladies and gents, welcome to GBX and this is The Emperor of Man 2, Heresy and the Imperium, Warhammer 40k Lore by the channel Lutin09. This is part 3 I guess, I already did 2 parts, first half an hour of this video. In the middle, you know, I kind of took a pause to this video and I started doing Temple Institute uh, short uh, videos about things, but yeah, let's pick it off again. Uh, I love this city so far, The Emperor of Man, it's such a big city, every video is like one, 1 hour, 1 and a half hour and there are many many like... I think he already made four of them. He just released fourth one, I guess, a month or so ago. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, I bought uh, you know Emperor Imperium T-shirt, right? Imperium logo. Uh, it's very hard to find what I'm a forty k uh, you know clothing here. So I guess you know I only found this. But yeah, I really want to buy more you know T-shirts about what I'm a forty k because I love this so much. I I'm gonna have to I guess like, import it from uh, USA or something. So yeah, let's do this one. Fortunately for the Imperium, one thing was slowing down Horus and his legions, logistics. Despite acquiring a massive force, Horus found he was unable to move it efficiently around given the limitations of the warp vessels in his fleet and this did buy the Loyalist side some time. There is one other unmentioned force Horus found available to him, that of the warp demons themselves. However, interestingly at this time, despite many Space Marine legions pledging themselves to Horus, and to Chaos, they still viewed these creatures as dangerous warp phenomena and opposite to their principles. This shows that at the time it's believable that many of the Space Marines aligned to Horus were perhaps not entirely aware of what it was they were signing up for and had perceived this more as a political rebellion to impose a new order to the Imperium, rather than the truth of the matter which was that they were in fact surrendering it to a true fall into a hellish reality and a foul darkness that later awaited them all. This would all See, that's interesting. That implies that Chaos basically corrupted this uh, legions and Primarchs very slowly that they didn't even realize it, that they are getting corrupted. Because uh, they probably thought that they are just uh, rebelling against the Emperor. Because they clearly didn't like that they were aligning with demons. So they were only getting persuaded by the charismatic uh, Horus, I guess. Right? Horus persuaded them. Uh, everybody thought that, yeah, Horus has a point. Uh, you know, Emperor, the way he's going on, the way he's giving power to all the people in uh, all the humans in, you know, basically on Terra or in the basically Ecclesiarchy and all that, uh, you know, all the people in power, they're giving, he's, he's giving way too much power to them or Primarchs are not being treated as, you know, I guess second in command or something like that. You know, they are just only treated as some war tools and they felt neglected and probably in uh, normal conditions, this Primarchs would see uh, reason behind what, what is Emperor doing. Even though they might not like it, they probably would see the reason. But because Chaos is corrupting them, their hatred is kind of amplified and they don't even realize it. That's, that's interesting. It's slow, slow corruption. Also be in part down to the previous decisions to instigate a rule of ignorance over such matters, meaning many Astartes warriors genuinely had no real knowledge of what Chaos was or what it represented. Although it has to be said that this was rapidly changing and faster among some legions than others. Matters overall were made worse by the sheer amount of confusion reigning at this time. The warp had been disturbed, making warp travel again difficult. As outlined, this was both a positive and a negative for both sides concerned. It also made communication difficult, meaning some worlds could not be warned and meant that many did not know the truth of the matter or who indeed they could trust. Rogel Dawn, Primarch of the Imperial Fists, had been stationed on Terra for some years now after his return with Nathaniel Garrow and barely rested in his activities to prepare an insurmountable defence of Terra. However, his task was made all the more difficult by the warp storms which prevented ease of reinforcement as well as communication. 
In addition, Mars now failed to repel the Dark Mechanicum and had fallen to the Warmaster's forces and as such had to be continually blockaded and prevented from launching its own attacks to Earth. What? Really? So uh, Mars has fallen to the dark side, let's just say Dark Mechanicus. So Imperium's uh, basically supply chain is broken, right? No, because no stuff, new stuff is coming in this war. Because Mechanicus is the only people who supplying them with equipments, everything, all the equipments, weapons, uh, you know, titans and everything like that. So if they are fallen, Imperium's uh, supply chain has broken. And, you know, knowing the history of wars and how wars are fought, that is a massive blow. Now, you know, uh, Imperium has to finish this fight, uh, war, pretty fast, I guess. Because otherwise, they'll be in massive trouble with no new equipments coming. Huh. So that's a whole another element into this war. As far as the Emperor, Malkador and Imperial Fists were concerned, the spearhead on Isfahan V had been a catastrophic failure. Other legions, such as the Ultramarines, were now completely isolated and out of contact, and so they could do nothing but watch the galaxy burn around them, as Horus himself had stated he would as he oversaw the virus bombing of Isfahan III. Despite this period often being documented as clear-cut death guard against blood angels and so on, it was far more chaotic than this. Although battles and confrontations would occur, it was not as simple as the Warmaster declaring X Legion is now under my command. A legion comprised thousands of space marines, and they would rarely be all stationed in one location at once. Consequently, this fragmentation meant many could return from stationing elsewhere to find to their horror the truth of the matter. As outlined previously, although space marines can often appear to be mechanical machines of war, they are just as complex as any human in their thoughts, decisions and moralities, hence why Horus saw it necessary to slaughter so many loyalists from the legions he would call his own on Isfahan III. This meant that many smaller groups of marines, when returning to communication with their legion, would either meet a bloody fate at the hands of their brothers should they refuse to convert to the Warmaster's cause, or instead they would flee to form fragmented groups of rare marines known as Black Shields. Now just to diverge... Alright, so... I mean, damn, that is uh, really fucked up. Uh, we have seen that in our history a lot too. Whenever there is an inside coup, that happens a lot, right? Uh, where the loyalists are, right? Who belongs to which side? Uh, sometimes people, uh, you know, from one side realize that certain people are a threat regardless of what. Certain people are very loyalist. So they basically slaughter them and, you know, slaughter them surprisingly. So they don't even see that coming. That is really fucked up side of it. Because you come back from your station or whatever, wherever you posted, come back to your planet or something, you suddenly realize that allegiance or lots of people has sifted. You are confused and pe your own people try to kill you. It's very confusing time who to, uh, you know, who to side with, who to answer to. It's really fucked up all around. So this happens a lot in real world too. In the past it has happened in the any uh, coup in any empire. So this is similar to that. I can kind of see now why Horus Heresy weakened the Imperium because it kind of ate itself from inside. Very quickly, Black Shields are a rare form of Astartes who have fully severed themselves from their parent legion or chapter, but who still remain loyal to the Imperium. In this early time, however, only some of the Marines would obscure their shoulder plates, others would wear their legion colours and heraldry proudly believing themselves to be the purest warriors, uncorrupted by the darkness and the last remnants of their previous but now ruined glory. Later in time though, all these rogue Astartes would black out their armour to remain nice. anonymous as their legion loyalty became a deep shame and irrelevant to their personal missions. Yeah, yeah, I bitched about this a lot, that if there were, this was a game like Elder Scrolls, like a massive RPG open world game, I would be this, right? If there's a you know, character creation thing, I would be this, because it fits perfectly. You have no allegiance to any legion, you are kind of your own your own. So later on, you can join any faction if you want or something like that. Or your goals could change the way you want. It's really freedom in that sense. I like this, this whole element. And then obviously, blacked out armor looks cool. 
Black Shield Space Marines will later become the fabled Death Watch Marines, who dedicate themselves to endlessly battling Xenos using unorthodox methods and allying with fellow Black Shields whose prior Legion heritage is irrelevant and often best unspoken of. It is uncommon for the Black Shield to reveal more than bare details other than his name, basic training experiences and so on. They fight in the name of the Imperium but remain in a state of self-imposed exile. The Death Watch Black Shield Marines would also fight in a manner divergent to normal Marines. They will willingly sacrifice themselves where necessary or take on objectives that others would consider a death sentence. In many ways their lives seem to be a form of penance carrying the shame and weight of sin thrown down by their legions upon their shoulders but all the mm, so this is kind of similar to the people of Krieg right so uh, this is interesting thing like uh, between Krieg and obviously these are Astartes so definitely they are better than the soldiers of Krieg right because these are space marines and th those are not I think right so this would be kind of more powerful but yeah this is kind of similar to that the while remaining staunchly loyal to the Emperor. Horus continued his unending campaign of betrayal now in a bizarre parody of the Imperial Crusade, each world over which the Warmaster's shadow fell, a simple choice was given, total submission and surrender or total destruction and a lifetime of slavery and ultimately a miserable death. This campaign was also certainly one of fear-mongering and compliance for sibling worlds in a given system. For any world marked for destruction and genocide was never fully extinguished in this manner. It would conveniently allow those survivors who had not simply lost their minds from witnessing the horrors unleashed by the Dark Astartes could convey their experience to other neighbouring worlds and thereby assuring their near immediate surrender to the Warmaster's fleet. In this sense, these near total annihilation attacks on planets by the Warmaster were not true exterminatus as was seen on Isfahan 3, rather they were a clever and brutal propaganda tool to yet again demonstrate Horus's adept ability in the art of war he had perfected through the years of the Imperial Crusades. By now, some nine of the- Alright, <clears throat> this might be a- uh too much uh, thinking on my part but I think uh, we see a bit of dark side from Horus in that kind of tactics. Obviously that's a brilliant psychological tactic but uh, it feels like he's uh, now employing more of a darker side of it, right? He's trying to send more gruesome messages, right? By, you know, leaving survival like that and killing people gruesomely. Uh, you know, I guess uh, we can see a bit of chaos corruption in him even here. Right, he's going a bit dark there. His hatred of, uh, for his emperor is amplified, so he's going, he's uh, employing more brutal tactics here. And obviously, him being a war master, that's a pretty smart technique, because anybody who goes through a traumatic experience of seeing everybody die, your planet getting destroyed, obviously would have tales that is even more horrifying than they witness. You know, their their experience gets amplified when you're that kind of scared and uh, scarred psychologically. So that's a brilliant tactic because now he can, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically uh, tell people what kind of demons were there. And uh, not just that, probably amplify the effects of them, like how terrifying they were. The 20 Space Marine Legions were under the command of Horus. An interesting but specifically relevant aside to this is to mention the 2nd and 11th Space Marine Legions. They would have all records of their existence destroyed and no history or explanation given as to their origin, actions oh, or fate. This. The complete and utter erasure of all records of the 2nd and 11th legions is considered by Imperial historians as the most successful edict of obliteration ever carried out. However, fragments of information do exist through quoted literature or documents and it seems that these two legions records were eradicated prior to the Horus heresy. We have no way of knowing for sure what happened to the erased two legions but it seems likely they were precursors to the events of the heresy. Ooh, that's so awesome. The two legion that got lost, I guess second and eleventh like he said. Uh, I knew that after 20 only 18 were there. Two that got uh, lost Nobody knows any detail about that. That's why I love this uh, lore of Warhammer 40k because the people who created this lore, 
deliberately left out the information even to us, even as a side story or just to know things that we have no information of that. That just makes it awesome. So in the future, Games Workshop, is that the developers? Uh, developers? Yeah. They, is that the people who created this? Uh, they could basically create more lore going forward that a new information came to light. Somebody unearthed some uh, details of what happened to those legion and just story can intensify from there. Because to me it feels like if this happened around before the horror series, like he said, this could have something to do with chaos, right? That maybe, uh, you know, chaos corrupted them, just like chaos corrupted Horus, but at a whole another level. Like they corrupted uh, them at the, uh, such an extreme level that uh, they are like part of chaos now. They are like demons or something like that. They are part of chaos. They are, you know, they are, you know, their whole being is now connected to the chaos at the level that's like, like how demons are basically. So they are corrupted at that level. And maybe Imperium uh, basically destroyed them and, you know, basically destroyed all their records. Because why would Imperium wouldn't have the records of them? Only reason there is no information of them because Imperium del deliberately don't want that information. The only way that could happen is Imperium is the one who destroyed them. Right? And if Emperor, Emperor destroyed them, that means they probably were corrupted at a level that obviously they were far gone. Not just that, uh, destroying what happened to them and all the information is pretty crucial because that would, I guess, hide the fact that uh, Primax and basically people of Imperium can be corrupted at that level. Emperor doesn't want that kind of information going out because that would frighten the people. That would frighten all the other Primarchs. That uh, chaos can corrupt them at that level. That they become near like demons like creature. They are connected way too much to the chaos than the immaterial or whatever, or whatever the plane, the you know, holy terra and everything is. That would be interesting if that's the case. Obviously that's a reach. I'm just, you know, thinking things that comes to my mind that make sense. But that would be so awesome if that's the detail. The Primarch of the Space Wolves, Lehman Russ, is recorded as stating that Space Marines had been previously tasked with fighting one another when speaking to Caspar Horsaw, who questioned him, the unprecedented, like Astartes fighting Astartes, like the route being called to sanction another legion, that, no, that is not unprecedented. Whoa, that's grim. This gives credence to the possibility that the Space Wolves are the Emperor's preferred execution legion, as they would be later tasked with the destruction of the Thousand Sons and Magnus the Red. Another quote stated that the Wolves will be loosed again. This small fragment suggests it is not the first time they'd faced such a mission. Malc oh, this, this, he's literally saying what I just said. The Imperium is the one who killed those two legions, because they had to. Oh, I love this. The Sigilite and Rogal Dawn of the Imperial Fists would also shed some fragmented light on this history. Malkador would say, Horus has three of his brother legions with him. You have your fists and 13 others. Would that it were 15, mused Dawn. Do not even think it, my friend, warned Malkador. They are lost to us forever. <laughs> I know, said Dawn. A conversation. This points to that, like, the Imperium is the one who destroyed them because they were far lost to the chaos. This definitely feels like, and then basically hide the fact that what happened to them. That's why there is no information of them. Because they don't want that information getting out. This is so good, man. ...station between Primarch Rogal Dawn and Malkador the Sigilite. And this leads us to speculate that a great darkness caused them to be lost prior to heresy. But the most telling of all would be part of Horus's vision during his out-of-body experience on Davin, where he would have, among other delusions, a reminiscence back in time to the DNA laboratories of the Emperor. We know that the warp creatures had originally scattered the Primarchs, so it seems entirely likely that this vision was at least in part accurate. Horus would describe that. He stopped by the tank with eleven stenciled upon it. The eleventh Primarch feeling the untapped glories that might have lain ahead for what grew within, but knowing that they would never come to pass. This could suggest that Chaos wanted to demonstrate to Horus that he was not the first to be corrupted, and that where previously they had failed and subsequently were destroyed by the Emperor, he would succeed. Oh, this also pleads to the fact that uh, Chaos probably showed Horus to see that. 
how little emperor cares about their ch his children the primarchs he destroyed these two legions your two primarchs basically because uh, emperor couldn't care less that probably fueled Horus's hatred towards emperor even more basically chaos played this mind trick uh, you know i guess a uh, political game towards him that would fit perfectly these glimpses are interesting, but do beg the question, if such a fate had befallen the 2nd and 11th legions, why was the Emperor not more cautious to allow such darkness to encroach and infect his Astartes again? On the other hand, perhaps it was precisely these earlier corruptions which led the Emperor to his course of outlawing knowledge of chaos, the old adage of what you don't know can't hurt you. Yeah, can't hurt you. I was just going to say that. I'm glad I didn't pause it because he just said that. Uh, that obviously he emperor uh, you know made sure not to tell them because if just telling them the chaos exists is enough for them to be easier mark against chaos then of course uh, emperor even after what happened to second and 11 legion how he had to probably destroy them and remove all their existing records like what happened to them uh, emperor still won't say anything to the primarchs because by not telling them is the best way to prevent them from getting hurt by chaos but clearly we know that's not how things work how primarchs are stretched across the universe they would bound to come across something that tells them the chaos is real so i guess emperor made a grave mistake there emperor should have known that how primarchs is basically spread around the universe uh, Primarchs would have come across something that tells them the chaos is real anyway and uh, by, by then there would be way too easy pickings against chaos so the best strategy would have uh, to you know tell them the chaos exists and try to make sure that they are stronger against them fight against the chaos I guess because we already have you know uh, certain psychers uh, who are trained in a way that they they can fight against uh, the chaos chaos demons and everything I guess the nuns those nuns of ecclesiarchy, whatever that is, I guess their mind is so stable that no forces of chaos or demons can get, get through them or something because they train themselves at that level, right? If I remember correctly. So Emperor could have done the similar thing with the Primarchs and trained them to fight against chaos. I think he made a grave mistake not telling them. Hurt you. Additionally, perhaps the fact that if indeed these two now erased legions were corrupted and then crushed by the Space Wolves, could this have lulled the Emperor into a false sense of security, believing any further corruptions to be also surmountable? Uh, we on. could speculate that the Chaos Gods perhaps even allowed these legions to be destroyed prior to the Horus Heresy so as to deliberately misdirect the Emperor into believing them to be weaker or less capable of force than they actually were. There is no definitive answer, this is all supposition, but the possibilities and ramifications are particularly intriguing. Whatever the reasons for these prior events and the consequences they would carry, one thing was now certain. Horus's fleet seemed unstoppable as it approached Terra. Rogal Dawn and Malkador the Sigilite were receiving the fragmented survivors from the Isfahan 5 massacre at this time and began to realise the grim reality of what they were facing. They hurriedly attempted to contact the Space Wolves and White Scars, who as they were about to return to Terra, were now engaged by the traitors of the Alpha Legion. This made retreat difficult, but the White Scars were able to break free to return to Terra, with the Wolves vowing to follow them on once they had eradicated the Alpha Legion's force. The Ultramarines similarly had been engaged on the planet of Kalth against the Wordbearers. Robot Gilman... Oh yeah, they're fighting against the Wordbearers, yeah. Uh, so, the Smurfs, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess how to stop that is I'll risk 23 minutes mark and how to go anyway. I don't know. I'm, I know I'm taking a sweet time, uh, you know, reacting to this, but I don't want to rush this, right? Uh, the lore is so good, and I feel like I like this lore so much that I'm remembering everything I reacted so far. I remember the first portion of this reaction that I did, I don't know, a month ago or something. It's been good enough time when I did that. I don't even remember that. Even the first part, I remember that. Emperor of Man 1 and all the even the Brickies, uh, you know, explains and I remember that too. So, you know, I'm taking this slow, but I'm kind of understanding the way, the, uh, you know, the more and more I, you know, uh, react to this video, I guess. And Lutin is great. Lutin is going deep into this lore, even giving his take, uh, which, you know, kind of makes sense because even I figured that out. Like, you know, the 2nd and 11th, you know, uh, Legion basi basically got destroyed by the Emperor himself because they got corrupted. Because that makes the most sense. Otherwise, why would the information not be there? Only way Imperium doesn't know what happened to them is Imperium didn't want anybody to know. 
That would be the only case. So it's great how this psychological mind mind game is happening in the back. How the psychology of Horus and all the corrupted uh, Primax, uh, you know, what, what were happening to their mentality at the time. How they were corrupted slowly. That's awesome too. Because when I first realized the chaos, what uh, Horus Heresy is, I just thought chaos point blank corrupted them at, at a level that they were not themselves. But apparently that's not the case, right? They were slowly corrupted. Uh, chaos played mind game with them. Uh, and uh, you know obviously the, what happened to the legion how internal warfare started all the mutinies and shit this understandable how you know uh, imperium basically eat itself from inside because whenever cool type this type of coup happens right uh, there's way too many internal casualties way too many loyalists gets destroyed so to understand about how many people got destroyed in horus and imperium got, became weaker so this is great. Alright people, if you like Merrickson, don't forget to like and subscribe. So I know which type of videos to react to more. I love Warhammer and everything Warhammer related. So if you know of any good videos or good channels, right, uh, about Warhammer 40k, make sure to comment down. I read all my comments even if I don't, uh, you know, uh, reply. So far I know Lutin 09 Arch, which some people hate, I guess, uh, because uh, certain comments that he made. Uh, to me, it's just like, you know, does he do good uh, lore videos? Then I, it doesn't matter to me what comments he made. Because I only care about the lore right now, not what he thinks and what his views are. So, you know, Arch is also fine. I, I react to this Krieg video, which was good, I guess. And then there is, uh, you know, that Australian channel. I forgot his name, right? I haven't reacted much from that, but I'm planning to. Yeah, I guess comment down any other, you know, great channel you know of because I love this. So far, I've been deep inside the Imperium and Imperium related videos. But I hope there are more videos like this about other like Necrons, Old Ones, Catans, uh, things like that, uh, you know, Tyranids too. Even though it's pretty simplistic, Tyranids could probably should have some deep lore behind them knowing how Warhammer 40k... Uh, plays around i guess i don't know how else to say that way too many lore or small things that is great also eldars right eldars has so many groups to them i like the you know the uh, really dark eldars drukaris i think their name is who resides in a you know webway i guess which are really really fucked up and dark their uh, deep lore would be great i mean i already react to those in uh, certain parts here and there but I would really love the deep video on that by Lutin or something. I don't know if Lutin did video on them or not, but I'll have to check it out. But yeah, first I'm going to finish this, I guess, the Emperor Man 2. And then I'll react to some other ones, like Orcs or something like that. Then I'll resume the Emperor Man 3 in the future. Alright, people. Uh, I'll see you next time.